A dam rising in Pakistan's northwest mountains isn't just concrete and steel. It's a weapon in a water war that's been quietly raging for decades. A conflict where rivers become leverage, where upstream neighbors can strangle entire regions with the turn of a valve, and where two million people's access to electricity depends on whether this single structure can be completed on time. This is the Momon Dam, 800 megawatts of generating capacity, 2.9 billion kilowatt hours of annual production, and Pakistan's most ambitious answer to an existential threat most of the world doesn't see coming. Because, while headlines focus on missiles and borders, the real battle in South Asia is being fought over something more fundamental water. The Swat River Valley in northwestern Pakistan was once remote and quiet. Today, it's a construction zone operating around the clock. Excavators tear through rock. Thousands of workers move earth in coordinated waves. What's emerging from this chaos isn't merely infrastructure, it's strategic independence. The Momon Hydropower Project officially began in September 2019. Located in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province along the Swat River, it holds a distinction that makes it uniquely valuable in Pakistan's geography. The Swat River originates entirely within Pakistani territory. Unlike the Indus and its major tributaries, which flow from India and can be controlled by Indian dams, the Swat cannot be choked off by external forces. That geographical reality transforms this dam from an energy project into a geopolitical asset. In a region where water access can be weaponized, having full control over a river's source isn't just convenient, it's strategic security. The numbers behind Mohmand are substantial. When completed in 2028, the dam will generate 800 megawatts of installed capacity. That translates to roughly 2.9 billion kilowatt hours annually, enough to power approximately 2 million people. For a nation that has struggled with chronic electricity shortages for decades, this represents meaningful relief. Pakistan's power crisis isn't abstract. It manifests in rolling blackouts that shut down factories mid-shift, forcing layoffs. In rural homes where children study by candlelight because grid electricity is unreliable. In hospitals where backup generators are necessities, not luxuries in industrial zones where foreign investors hesitate because consistent power supply can't be guaranteed. 800 megawatts won't solve everything, but it's a significant step toward reliability, the kind of boring, predictable infrastructure that developed economies take for granted and developing ones desperately need. But electricity is only part of what Momon delivers. The dam will provide 140 million cubic meters of clean drinking water each year, its reservoir will irrigate over 450,000 acres of farmland, land that currently depends on unpredictable rainfall or increasingly scarce groundwater. Officials project this irrigation capacity could double regional rice production. In an economy where nearly 40% of the workforce depends on agriculture, that's not just economic growth. It's food security and livelihood stability for millions. To understand why Pakistan needs this dam so urgently, you need to understand the water crisis that's been building for decades. The Indus Waters Treaty, signed in 1960 and brokered by the World Bank, divided the six rivers of the Indus Basin between India and Pakistan. Pakistan received rights to three western rivers, the Indus, Jhelum, and Chenab. India got the three eastern rivers, the Ravi, Bees, and Sutledge. On paper, it seemed like a fair division that would prevent conflict. In practice, it created a structural vulnerability Pakistan is still struggling to overcome. India controls the headwaters of those rivers Pakistan depends on. Over the decades since 1960, India has constructed numerous dams on the western rivers, projects that, while technically permitted under the treaty's terms, give New Delhi enormous leverage over water flow into Pakistan. The treaty allows India to build run-of-river hydroelectric projects that don't store large volumes of water. But, you know, the distinction between permissible projects and impermissible storage dams has become a source of constant dispute.
And even within treaty limits, India's ability to regulate river flow creates opportunities for what Pakistan views as water aggression. The consequences aren't theoretical. In 2019, India suddenly released massive volumes of water without adequate warning. The surge damaged Pakistani infrastructure and caused flooding that resulted in over $7 billion in economic losses. Farmland was destroyed. Homes were swept away. Lives were lost. Then in early 2024, during the critical wheat planting season, India closed key water gates. More than 200,000 hectares of Pakistani farmland went without adequate irrigation. Thousands of farmers watched crops wither. The timing wasn't accidental. It was during the agricultural window when water is most desperately needed. These actions may fall within the technical boundaries of the treaty, but their impact is devastating, and they reveal a harsh reality. When your water supply originates in another country, you're vulnerable to decisions made by governments you can't influence and have no control over. Pakistan needed a solution. It turned to China. China didn't just offer funding, it brought engineering capability that few nations possess. The China Gajauba Group, a division of China Energy, took on the Momond project with resources and expertise accumulated from building some of the world's largest dams. The scale is staggering. The volume of concrete and earth being moved rivals six great pyramids of Giza. But honestly, Volume was never the primary challenge. Geology was. Initial surveys underestimated the terrain's complexity by a factor of three. The region is riddled with fault lines and unstable rock layers. Building a dam that could withstand seismic activity while maintaining structural integrity required innovation beyond standard engineering practices. Most construction firms facing this discovery would have demanded timeline extensions and budget increases. Some would have abandoned the project entirely. Chinese engineers responded differently. They designed a specialized foundation system, essentially a steel-reinforced substructure that anchors the dam deep into stable geological layers beneath the fractured surface rock. It's kind of like building a fortress underground before constructing the visible structure above. They also implemented all-weather construction systems. South Asian monsoons typically shut down major construction projects for months each year. Rain turns work sites into mud pits. Equipment becomes inoperable. Worker safety declines. Projects stall. The Chinese teams deployed weather-resistant techniques and covered work areas that allowed construction to continue through conditions that would normally force stoppage. The result, Mohmand, isn't just on schedule, it's ahead of projections. This speed matters because every month of delay extends Pakistan's energy vulnerability and postpones the agricultural benefits the dam will provide. Mohmand is one piece of a much larger transformation, reshaping Pakistan's infrastructure through the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC. This $60-plus billion initiative represents one of the most ambitious development programs currently underway anywhere in the world. CPEC includes highways connecting major cities, rail networks modernizing freight transport, port facilities expanding maritime trade capacity, and a nationwide energy infrastructure overhaul. The energy component alone encompasses multiple major hydroelectric projects, coal and renewable power plants, and transmission networks delivering that power to population centers. Consider the Neelam Jeelam Hydropower Station. Built by Chinese contractors and operational since 2018, it now supplies 15% of Pakistan's total electricity. That's not a marginal improvement, it's transformational. Major regions including Punjab and Azad Jammu and Kashmir, which previously experienced frequent blackouts affecting nearly 40% of households, now have stable electricity access for the first time. The economic impact extends beyond just having lights that stay on. Stable power enables manufacturing. It allows businesses to operate predictably. It means students can study after dark. Hospitals can rely on equipment functioning consistently, and households can preserve food safely. Then there's the Diamer Basha Dam, 
often called Pakistan's Three Gorges Project in reference to China's massive hydroelectric complex. Expected completion in 2028, Daimer Basha will boost Pakistan's water storage capacity by 15 percent, generate 4,500 megawatts of power, and provide critical flood control protecting over 10 million people downstream. Flooding in Pakistan isn't rare, it's routine and often catastrophic. The 2010 floods affected 20 million people. The 2022 floods displaced 8 million and caused over $30 billion in damage. Dams like Deemer Basha won't prevent all flooding, but they provide controlled storage and release capabilities that can significantly reduce flood severity. These projects deliver more than infrastructure. They create economic opportunity and build human capital. The Mohman project alone has generated over 8,000 jobs. 75% of the workforce is Pakistani. These aren't just unskilled labor positions. They include technical training in welding, electrical systems, tunnel construction, and mechanical engineering. Many workers were previously unemployed or underemployed in an economy with limited opportunities. Now they're gaining skills transferable to future infrastructure projects. Pakistan is building not just dams, but a skilled workforce capable of maintaining and expanding infrastructure independently. The Chinese approach includes knowledge transfer that's often missing from international development projects. Complete operational manuals are being provided in local languages. Training centers teach Pakistani technicians how to maintain complex systems without ongoing foreign support. The goal isn't perpetual dependence its building indigenous capability. This represents a fundamental shift in development philosophy. Traditional international infrastructure projects often created dependence on foreign contractors for maintenance and operation. CPEC projects are designed for eventual Pakistani self-sufficiency. Hydroelectric power also addresses Pakistan's environmental vulnerabilities. The country still imports significant volumes of coal, which strains foreign exchange reserves and contributes to air pollution and carbon emissions. Projects like the Suki Kinari Dam will displace over 1 million tons of coal consumption annually, reducing carbon emissions by approximately 2.5 million tons each year. In climate terms, that's equivalent to removing half a million cars from roads permanently. Pakistan is one of the world's most climate-vulnerable nations, despite contributing minimally to global emissions. Transitioning from fossil fuels to hydroelectric power provides both energy security and environmental benefits. But not everyone welcomes Pakistan's growing infrastructure independence. During periods of heightened tension, there were reports that India attempted sabotage at the Neelam Jellam facility. The attempts failed, not because they lacked intent, but because the dam was engineered to withstand both natural disasters and deliberate attacks. This durability is strategic design, not accident. Chinese engineers building infrastructure in geopolitically sensitive regions incorporate redundancy and resilience that anticipates hostile action, not just natural stresses. As Mohmand, Diamar Basha, and other major projects like Karat and Kohala reach completion, they'll create an integrated network for water management, energy generation, and flood control. This network fundamentally alters Pakistan's strategic position. For the first time in over 60 years, Pakistan will have significant buffer capacity against upstream water manipulation. India's ability to weaponize river flow diminishes when Pakistan has substantial domestic storage and alternative water sources. This doesn't eliminate vulnerability entirely. Geography still favors India's position upstream. But it reduces Pakistan's exposure to the kind of sudden crises that occurred in 2019 and 2024. Critics, particularly in Western media and policy circles, often characterize China's Belt and Road Initiative as debt trap diplomacy, a scheme to burden developing nations with unsustainable loans that ultimately surrender sovereignty to Beijing. The reality in Pakistan is more nuanced. Yes, Pakistan has accumulated debt through CPEC. But that debt has delivered tangible infrastructure that's operational and generating returns. 
The Neelum Jellum plant produces electricity that's sold, generating revenue. The highways reduce transport costs, boosting economic efficiency. The ports expand trade capacity. Compare this to debt accumulated through consumption or military spending, expenditures that produce no revenue and build no productive capacity. Infrastructure debt, if managed properly, can be productive debt that pays for itself over time through economic growth it enables. During Momon's construction, Chinese teams preserved 17 archaeological sites rather than bulldozing through them. They relocated over 3,000 trees older than a century instead of clearing them. They implemented environmental sustainability standards exceeding typical international norms. This attention to cultural and environmental concerns counters the narrative of Chinese development as purely extractive or insensitive to local values. A sign at the Momon construction site, written in Urdu, reads, Steel Brotherhood, Bright Future. It's more than propaganda. It reflects how many Pakistanis view this partnership. Not as charity or exploitation, but as cooperation between nations with aligned interests. Pakistani Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif stated, The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor is not just a series of projects. It's a vision one that is rebuilding our country. That vision is visible in newly electrified homes where children can study after dark, in farmland receiving reliable irrigation for the first time, in factories operating without constant blackout interruptions, in workers gaining technical skills that will support their families for decades. The Momon Dam represents something larger than its 800 megawatts or its irrigation capacity. It represents Pakistan's effort to escape structural vulnerabilities created by geography and history, to build resilience against neighbors who can weaponize natural resources, to create the boring, reliable infrastructure that enables development. Whether this model proves sustainable long-term remains to be seen. Debt management, environmental impacts of massive dams, and geopolitical complications could all create challenges. But in 2025, as Mohmond rises toward completion, it stands as evidence that infrastructure can be geopolitical strategy, that water security is national security, and that partnerships between nations can reshape what seemed like permanent disadvantages into opportunities for transformation. The turbines that will soon spin beneath Momond won't just generate electricity, they'll power a future Pakistan is building for itself, one kilowatt hour, one irrigated field, one trained worker at a time.